It's week 65. We're continuing with our discussion of Sin Intel form. We're almost there at the end of the form now, just a little bit to go. We were talking last week about the Tansal Bongsal relationship. To put that into clarity and perspective, you all know that when we do double hand chi sal, we're constantly doing that exchange from bong to tan. Obviously, both hands are working at the same time, so Jung's doing it on this side, I'm doing it on the other side. In single hand chi sal, we have the same relationship. Bong sal back into tan sal. Keeping the elbow coming to the center so that he can't get in. Not dropping the elbow backwards and allowing him in. In the double action, it's even more dangerous. If I do a bong and then drop this one back, he's gonna follow me straight in and hit me. So the form is showing you the perfect recipe for keeping your opponent out. I can't get in here or here and Jung can't get in here or here. So when we do the action in the form, thanks Jung, we want to make sure we keep that elbow out here and we literally take it into the middle, direct line. So this becomes Tan Sal. So we're replicating Chi Sal without a partner. Basically Sin and Tal form, I've said this before in the past, perhaps in this series, but I've definitely said this to my students over many, many occasions. When you do Sin and Tal form, you are essentially doing Chi Sal by yourself. You're practicing the Chi Sal drill on your own before you actually engage with a partner. This is a perfect example of that. That is one of the most important parts of the Chi Sal rotation, the Pun Sal. When we've finished the Tan Sal, the next and final move of this section is Dai Jiang. Dai means underneath. Dai Jiang therefore means underneath palm. Some people interpret it as a strike, but you think about this, if you want to hit somebody like that, the first person that's going to hurt is you. This is not a striking action. Even to the head, that wouldn't be a very clever way to hit someone. It would probably knock you over. Dai Jiang is the concept of shifting his elbows off the center line. If Jung makes his arms very stiff and strong, if you're used to hitting those arms, that's not going to move him very far. But if you practice going forward, you can see how easy I can push him away. No effort for me, but it moves him very vigorously away. Obviously, you won't always have a situation where you're perfectly below your opponent's arm, but you might be at the side of the arm. Same thing will work. Just by shifting forward, you can change his position. So when we do the bong and the tan, the final action is to practice deflecting your opponent's center away. We make a rotation, make a fist, pull it back, and that's the end of that segment of the form. That leaves us with the final part of the form, which is when we shoot the left hand into the center and then follow up with what's called shuk sal in our family. Shuk means shave or scrape. So I'm literally scraping one arm against the other arm. I do it three times before I finish with continuous punching, Lin Wan Kun, right? So first of all, why does this only occur on the left side? The answer is actually quite a simple one. Most Wing Chun people, because of the nature of Wing Chun using the, the strong hand as the dominant side, would tend to face their opponent with their right hand forward. Which means if he attacks low on this with the left hand, that's an easy fix. I'm already out there, so that's easy. But what if he attacks with the other hand? I can't go across. There isn't time to go across. I need an emergency application. Think about, go back a few stages. Remember when we did the Na Cao and the Dan Cao? This is the theory. This is an application of the theory. So when Jung does that attack and he's on that side, I just cut down into the middle. It's like a shortcut in case I'm on the wrong side. If I was on this side, it wouldn't be an issue. And why do we only do it on the left side? Because the majority of people are right-handed. So if they need that emergency technique, they're going to need it on the left hand. If you want to practice the other side, it's easy. You can practice it yourself. Just change the, the form a little bit when you do it by yourself. All right? So I'll leave it there because we're already running out of time on this segment, and we'll finish it off in the very next one. See you next week.